Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics with another DIY video. If you love crafts and projects as much as I do, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be one of the first to know when we do have new videos available. Just look at these adorable lanterns. Now you could use those on your patio with a string of, of LED lights or maybe in a bedroom. I know that my daughter would absolutely love this in her room. So let me show you how we made that. This collection is Emma's Garden from Michael Miller Fabrics and it has three, just four actually, gorgeous, gorgeous colorways and purples and pinks and aquas and yellows, absolutely gorgeous. So the great news is that out of one fat quarter, you get six of these lanterns. So to make this display, as you see it behind us, it's only about five or six um, of the fat quarters. So let me put those aside and show you how we make them. So much fun. Now you'll need some heat and bond. We carry this by the yard, but I really recommend the five yard roll. This is the heat and bond ultra hold. Heat and bond comes in three weights. They have the feather light, the light, and then the ultra hold. For crafts, we find the ultra hold works best. So that's something you'll be sure you want to pick up um, and have just in your craft room because there's always many uses for the heat and bond. So you'll lay out your fat quarter. And now a fat quarter um, is 18 by 21 to 22, depending on the fabric. So you'll take that entire fat quarter. And the first thing that you'll do is you're going to cut this into four sections. The first three sections were six and a half by 18. So you did that ahead of time. And then one inch by the 18. And of course down here would be your salvage. Um, you can just you know put that aside. You, you won't be using that. Out of the heat and bond, you'll do the exact same. You'll cut three sections, six and a half by 18, and one section that is one by 18. You'll have your pieces of the heat and bond and your pieces of your fabric. And of course, you'll put the heat and bond to the wrong side of the fabric. Iron that down with a medium setting. The instructions are on the back of the roll of the heat and bond if you've never used this product before. So you make sure you get the right temperature. And then when that's all bonded together, it'll look like this. So the fabric is on the one side and the heat and bond is on the other. So let's put two of those sections aside for now. And let's work, then this is the hanger. This is this little part right here. So let's work on that at the very end. So let's take our first section. And actually, you know what? I'll cut this at the same time. Makes, makes sense. So this is six and a half by 18, one by 18. Just line them up and you're gonna cut that exactly in half. So that'll be nine inches. Let's make sure we get that exactly right. Okay. Now the hanger we won't be using at this exact second, but to make things easier, I think we'll just go ahead and iron that together right now. So these two halves, let's take off our paper packing. Actually, let's heat that up. Sometimes what happened there was we didn't have our iron quite hot enough. So sometimes if you go to peel that off, if you, if you notice there's a little, it's not coming off cleanly, just reheat that and it will transfer completely. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Cause that's, that's what happens sometimes. Um, you definitely don't wanna have your iron too hot with any heat and bond product. And so sometimes we err on the cool side, but then it doesn't make a complete adhesion. So that happens sometimes. So now that that's cooled, we'll go ahead and we'll peel that off. And if it doesn't want to come off, if you just crease the, the corner like that, you see how it released? That just, that's kind of happens. Again, that just, that's the real life of, of crafting and sewing. Again, if I just kind of fold that corner down, it tends to release. There we go. So we'll do that. Now you'll position these over your pressing mat and you might want to have, a, I don't know, just a piece of muslin or a fabric that you're not worried about if it gets a little bit of glue on it. Because the, because the heat and bond is all the way to the edge, sometimes it can kind of want to flow out or ooze out a little bit. So just be careful. A little bit of something underneath there and maybe even something on top so that it doesn't get on your iron. Let's see, let's get those all positioned just so. And now we'll iron it together. You can all, I don't know if you can hear that. 
that was the actual glue kind of adhering. And we'll do the same thing with the handles. Again, we'll just be peeling that off. In fact, I better go ahead and make sure that's ironed down just as, just as well, just to be safe. We'll peel that off and do the same process. This is good glue. This does not want to come off here. Here we go. You just kind of fuss with it till something releases there. Okay, maybe this corner. Okay. And again, right, uh, wrong sides together. Let's iron that down. Okay. Great. And we'll put that aside for now. We'll put the hanger aside for now. Now, if your fabrics don't completely line up, um, ours just is off ever so slightly. You know what? We'll just go trim that up right now. It's not going to make a difference in the long term of this project because it'll just make our lantern just slightly smaller. So now I've got the two adhered, the two sides adhered together, and we're actually going to cut this in half again. Now we had cut this down to nine, so we'll cut this at the four and a half inch to give us two pieces. Make sure I've got that lined up correctly. There we go. Okay, and I'll put that aside for now. Now think of a hot dog. This is what a hot dog looks like. So you're gonna fold this in half, hot dog style, exactly in half. And we'll take that to the pressing mat. And what we're trying to do is create this crease right here. Now the longer you keep the iron there, the stronger and more succinct that crease will be. So if you don't want as, as um, much of a folded lantern, you don't wanna leave this pressing as long. So let's make sure that's lined up exactly. Okay. I like that. All right, back to our cutting mat. We're going to line this up so that I'm on the inch line. Now we're gonna cut every half an inch. So we'll cut in the gap, cut on the line, cut in the gap, cut in the line, all the way down. And that's where the little ruler comes in handy because it can line me up exactly where I wanna be. Now we're not gonna cut all the way through, of course. We're gonna leave it till it's about a half an inch away from that raw edge. So you want to stop at the same place for each of those rows you cut. And we'll continue like this all the way down. Now this rotary cutter I have, this is a new purple Ulfa rotary cutter. How gorgeous is this? <laughs> Purple's a great color. Um, every now and again, Ulfa will come out with some limited edition rotary cutters and they come out with this purple. It's absolutely, I think, beautiful. So if you love purple, you can grab one of these on the website. All right, so we've cut that all the way um, down and now you have your lantern. So this is where you'll get your hot glue gun. Look how cute this is. You'll want to put just a little bit of glue right here, right here, and right here. Not too much. And let's glue it at the bottom as well. And then right there is just a touch of that crease. Isn't that cute? So, so fun and so easy. So that's one. Of course, the other 
uh, rectangle will make another one. So out of each of those six and a half by 18 inch strips, you'll get two lanterns. Now, as far as the little hangers go, that's where that skinny piece comes in. So let's get that out. And if it's fraying a little bit, and of course that happens with fabric as you handle it, um, you can just take that back to your cutting mat with your ruler and just clean that up. It happens uh, to me a lot, you know, just handling projects. I get that kind of raw edges and fraying. So you just go clean that up. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So line this up with in between two of your one inch lines and we're going to cut this exactly in half because our little lantern hangers are actually only half inch wide. So let's cut that very carefully. Then we're going to turn those to the side. Remember this is nine inches long. So we're going to cut it at the three and three again to make our six hangers. So let's, let's use our little, that's again where that little ruler comes in so handy. We'll cut here, oh, line those back up. And we'll cut again. And then we'll go to our lantern. Now what I like to do is wherever that crease was right there, where they all actually, not the crease, but where the union of those two came together, I like to put the hanger right there because it kind of hides that spot. So we'll put that right there and over on the other side. Like that, that's our little hanger. How cute is that? Now, as you can see, we strung those on some string. You'll get some kite string. As you can see, we strung all those and uh, get a really long distance, longer than you think that you're going to want. So I've got this one and I've, let me give you some other of the lanterns that I've already made ahead of time. And I'll show you how we string those together. So of course, in the very beginning, leave plenty of, of lead, um, string because that way you'll be able to hang that to the height that you want. So let's go ahead and loop it through the handle. Again, I'm going to leave it much longer than I think that I want because I can always trim that later. We'll just try a simple double knot. Like that. And then if, let's say that I want to have a lantern every seven to eight inches. Let's say I want every seven inches. So I'm going to make a point. I kind of keep my finger there. You'll bring this through. Get it to the distance that you want. And you can even, you could even set those on your table and say, yes, I like that distance. Then you'll just very carefully go in there and tie the double knot and you'll keep going on until you have the length that you want. And of course, you'll just tie off at the end and there you go. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these lanterns out of fat quarters.